Hey guys, back for part two of this little series. And this is going to be about the contracts, really. And this is the part that I start to get into what I've referred to as knowing who you are as a player in the game. Because, specifically put, everything is a contract. Everything's a contract. Every code, every statute, every regulation, everything that comes out of a judge's or DA's mouth, a cop's mouth, every twitch out of their ass is a fucking offer to contract. I'm not shitting you. As a little example, there was a brother that knew who he was as a player in the game pretty well. He was... He was asking the right questions, and the judge was done with him and told him to get out of the courtroom. The whole time, the brother had had a toothpick in his mouth, in the corner of his mouth. He got about three steps from the door. And the judge said, oh, by the way, take that toothpick out of your mouth. Without even thinking about it, the brother kind of relaxed a minute for just that brief instant. As soon as that toothpick left the lips, the judge said, Bailiff, arrest that man. That was a contract. That was a contract right there. Another prime example. I was standing in front of the judge. He asked me if I was such and such legal name. And I said, well, I'm led to believe there's been a mistake. So what do you mean by a mistake? And I said, well, I'm led to believe that that name belongs to somebody called the Social Security Administration, which it does. Look on the back side of the card where it says we own this card and you must return it if we ask for it. I said, if that be true, you know, I'm led to believe that if I'm just assuming that name is mine, I'd be trespassing to chattels. And I said, if that be true, then I'm led to believe if I'm to use the name that doesn't belong to me as personal identification purposes, that would be committing fraud. And I certainly don't believe I want to commit fraud right here in the courtroom. And the judge asked, well, what do you suggest we do? And I said, well, could it be that you could call me friend of the court or peaceful inhabitant? And he said, okay, Mr. Peaceful Inhabitant. And I said, well, wait a minute. Where did the mister come from? Could it be I asked you to call me Peaceful Inhabitant? That little twist. Had I accepted that, that was a term and condition, that was an offer to contract, I'd have been under his so-called jurisdiction again. As it stood, the very next so-called hearing date, I was told charges were dismissed. You're no longer needed here. So... That being said, <coughs> excuse me, Bung is. <laughs> firm offers. Any merchant that is selling goods or services, if they make an offer, it's a firm offer. That is kind of what most municipalities are. Most so-called cities, counties, or what have you, so-called enforcement agencies of one nature or another, be it county sheriff or local city police, are all essentially merchants. No, they're not selling products, they're selling services, allegedly. Of course, I've noticed <laughs> how funny it is that one of the things that we'll get into here during all of this is the serve and protect wording on the side of the cop cars. He used to say serve and protect all the time on all these cop cars. And I'm not seeing it anymore. I'm not seeing it anymore. And I believe part of it is because when it comes down to it, the so-called constitution is a contract. But yet it is not essentially obligating anybody to anything. And in fact, the Founding Fathers, if you go and read the Constitution, go look at it. Go look it up. And go look at the very last line right before the so-called signatures. It says, in witness, 
not an obligation. Everybody, the so-called founding fathers, were witnessing that so-called contract. Witness isn't obligated to a contract, but yet the founding fathers turned around and told everybody, you're obligated to this. <laughs> really? They're not. They didn't. But the reality is this. There's that as well as what is known as um, uh, well, what is the term again? Oh, um, minimal contacts. If you have so-called uh, phone, got a phone with the so-called area code within a certain region if your so-called mail to the name goes to some place in that region you got a so-called cable bill whatever whatever they would look at this and consider it to be minimal contacts which is essentially how they would consider you to be in a contract with the so-called local municipality Sorry, guys, can't talk to you right now. If, in order to have a true contract, so this is one of those little things, little legal maxim. If he who will be deceived, let him. Essentially what that means is if you believe something to be true, that's all on you. Nobody's obligated to help you figure things out. So, in fact, two little incidences of that that the courts ruled on specifically. One, this lady, she, uh, she sees this line outside of this building going into the door at the end of the building. She doesn't know what the line's for. There's no signs. There's nothing. She doesn't ask anybody. She just gets in line. I guess there's some people filling in behind her too, but she gets into the door and she gets near the front of the line and she sees people getting shots in the arm. But she doesn't get out of line. She stays in line. She goes all the way to the front of the line. She gets the shots and she leaves and then she decides that she didn't really want to get the shots and so she sues. The court has basically said, fuck you. You don't want to stupid enough to stand in line. You fucking stood there and waited until you got the shots. Nobody held you there. That's your own fault. Another one where guy is, uh, he's talking to these people in Italy trying to Come to a so-called meeting of the minds, which is something we'll cover here real quick. He believes he has a meeting of the minds, but he gets the contract, comes in from Italy via the mail. He opens it up, but he can't read any of it. It's all in Italian. He doesn't go and get an interpreter. He doesn't learn Italian. He doesn't know anything in this contract because he doesn't understand any of the language. But he signs the contract, and pretty soon the contract goes bad, and the courts said, again, fuck you. You didn't get an interpreter, and you didn't learn the language. This is your fault. This is your problem. So... And in fact, this is just as a quick side note on that. It is said that the courts must speak to you in a language that you can understand. This is a specific word. Can. You can learn Italian. You can learn legalese. Do you know Italian? Do you know legalese? I don't know Italian. And I know a little legalese, but, you know, the reality is if it's a language that you can learn, 
that's something that they can can speak to you in doesn't mean that you do understand it. it means that you can understand it if you go and learn it so anyway meeting of the minds let's click over here offer and acceptance and formation of contract okay in order for there to be formation what needs to be is essentially and of course if we're going to back up into the offer and acceptance in the so-called legal realm there's what's known as mirror image essentially whatever the offer is you accept it as exactly as it is if there's some leeway some gray area that needs to be discussed these should be and need to be discussed in order for there to be a true contract just as we see on the word on the screen here what do you mean by the word offer what do you mean by the word acceptance what do you mean by the word formation what do you mean by this what do you mean by that what do you mean what do you mean what do you mean and it is not until you come to that point of we are both whoever we are the real parties at interest because we can only have a conversation like this with somebody that can speak to us because the reality of it is you can't get a piece of paper with ink on it to talk to you at least not that I've seen now if somebody out there has seen that please please show me where a piece of paper has actually spoken and actually verbally expressed things because until then a piece of paper is is known as having um what is it uh legal incapacity basically it cannot contract with you You cannot sit down with a piece of paper and ask it, what do you mean by this? What do you mean by that? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? You can only do this with a real party at interest. That being said, things such as, again, going back to the so-called Social Security card, this is, again, supposed to be a contract. And let me kind of cover something real quick, too. Every corporation, every government entity are all written as trusts. All trusts are written as corporations and governments because it's all one and the same. So that being said, things such as the Social Security Administration, it's written as a trust. And the man, the real breathing man, the spiritual man, is the beneficiary of all benefits from the trust all so-called property and is there any actual property well no what it, it is is it's a protection of my so-called interest in the property whatever property it may be so that being said when it comes down to contracting with a judge, a DA, a cop. If the principal, the so called state, even the city, the county, whichever it is, doesn't matter. It's all still a piece of paper with ink on it that does not have what we have right here legal capa incapacity, or it does not have legal capacity. So, that being said, in a very real sense, no agent can exceed the capacity of the principle for which they claim to be representing. That being said, technically speaking, a judge cannot contra contract with you. The DA cannot contract with you. 
Again, go back to he who will be deceived, let him. If you believe that these people can contract with you, then they can. They're going to actually try to contract with you, but they're also going to be doing it as so-called representatives of the state. The piece of paper with ink on it. They're going to want you to believe that you had a meeting of the minds with the representative, and that's equal to the meeting of the minds with a piece of paper with ink on it. And again, he who will be deceived, let him. If you think that it is good enough that a representative can actually be telling you exactly what the principal is actually thinking, I'm not sure that's absolutely true. I don't know that any employee that I've ever had on staff has ever known exactly what I was thinking. Hell, I don't even know if the wife has ever known what I was thinking or anybody else. I don't even know what I'm thinking sometimes. What the fuck? Let's be serious. So, that being said, when it comes down to whatever the situation is, if you don't understand who you are as a player in the game, then you'll be lost. The single most important part of everything here is you understanding who you are. And when it comes to, since everything is contracts, you are the only real party at interest. You're it. People talk about rights. There's no real rights. There's actually duties, in my opinion. And then there's also your choice as to whether or not you want to contract with somebody outside of your duties. And by duties, I mean this. In fact, the original so-called Constitution was allegedly written under the common law. And the common law is not what they want you to believe in the courts and the legal system, which is just some judge's opinion on a situation, which is fucking as, a, as ambiguous as it can get because you can't get three judges to agree to drinking coffee from the coffee machine while they're standing at the fucking coffee machine drinking from it. The real common law is we don't harm or kill each other. We don't steal or damage each other's property. We don't commit fraud against each other. And if we do, we must provide remedy to the injured party to make that injured party whole again. And it used to be way back in the day, fuck, if it was a farmer, you went and worked the motherfucker's farm. If he had a job, you went and worked his fucking job. You fulfilled that motherfucker's shoes until he was better. And if you killed that motherfucker, well, then that was your job for life as you fulfill that motherfucker's shoes. Everything else, every code, every statute, every regulation, not only is it an offer to contract, but it's also somebody's opinion. And the biggest thing that I ask people is this. When has somebody else's opinion ever applied to you? Has my opinion ever applied to any of you out there? I doubt it. And I don't believe any of your opinions have ever applied to me. Actually, I'm pretty fucking sure that they haven't. Now, we might agree on some things, though. And if we agree on things, well, then we're all good anyway. Fucking problem. What's the problem at all? But the reality is, if I say I don't like pink shoes and everybody that's wearing pink shoes goes to fucking jail for the next six months, what the fuck does my opinion have to do with anybody else? And really, I'm not going to go out and enforce that? Cannabis is bad for you. Cocaine is bad for you. Halloran is bad for you. So we're going to put you in jail for these things. These are victimless crimes. The fuck? Speeding, yo, you're speeding. Yeah, speeding is fun. <laughs> Actually, you go fast. But so what? It's just somebody's opinion. And in fact, there's ways that you would deal with that, even roadside. Because everything's ambiguous. 
In fact, if it wasn't ambiguous, there wouldn't be any need for so-called attorneys. Think about it. In fact, I had a professor in so-called law school say, it's all ambiguous. If it wasn't, we would all be looking for something else to do. Which basically means that it's so ambiguous that it doesn't mean shit unless you believe it does. But it comes down to this too. I've heard people talk about jurisdiction. And I've heard people have different so-called methods to deal with the so-called jurisdiction. I've heard people do such things as um, the secured party creditors and the uh, UCC1 filing and this, that, and the other. Which I've heard some people say that they've had success, but not much. And in almost all of it, and even including the ones where the people so-called denounce the name or try to claim ownership of the name, which I think is, well, I think it's retarded. I think it's ridiculous to claim ownership of anything. We'll get more into ownership in the next video when we talk about money. But the idea that you are the name is the first and foremost thing that they're looking for. If you do not claim the name, they don't have anything to go on. They need you to claim the name. They own the name. Once you claim that name, instead of telling you, oh, you just committed trespass to chattels, they're just going to go the other way and assume that since they own the name and you're claiming that you are the name, that they own you too. Yes, they own you too. If you claim to be a citizen, they own you. If you claim, or if you make claims, such as I'm doing now, right now, saying these things. But could it be? Think about it. So, that being said, it seems to me that once you start to understand who you are, especially if you're a spiritual man, one of the first things you have to realize is if you're truly a spiritual man, you're going by God's law. When I look up, I see God. Look over here, I see God. I look over there, I see God. But most importantly, when I look up, I see God. And I don't see the feet of another man. There is no other man above me telling me who I am or who I am not. Simply put, when it affects, let me see here. Where is this one? Yeah, let's go right here. Right here. Where it says on the screen, highlighted, volume 43, Amjuris 260, Amjuris 261, obligations of public officers as trustees to the public. The only one that's obligated to perform in any kind of a trust is the trustee. The name is the trustee. The name is part of the trust. And it is actually owned by the so-called trustees. That being said, when you claim that name, you have now alleviated the obligation of the public servants as trustees, and you have placed that obligation on yourself. This is why prisoners are called trustees. Pretty simple shit. Pretty simple shit. And it comes down to, again, if you 
really want to believe what they have to say at any point in time, that's completely on you. But if you start realizing that the biggest part of it is, and this is going to go back to the so-called badology, but I'm sure there's some of the brothers out there flipping in the breeze because I've made some claims, a bunch of them, yeah, I know. Sue me, bitches, sue me. But anyway, the reality is you still can't have a contract with a stack of paper with ink on it. One of the most important things to remember in all of this is that anything and everything that goes unquestioned, unrebutted, or unobjected to is considered to be consented to and are true. Which means that you should question every fucking word. Every fucking word. I'll post a link in the description to what I believe the brother's name is Kerry Zolman. Uh, brother's a phenomenal question asker. He's as keen, and that's uppercase K-I-N-G. He is acting as the king. And I love the way he plays country dumb, too, because it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Here's a little something. I'm going to read this out to you. Confusing a law with code statute regulation is considered to be gross negligence, and gross negligence is equal to fraud. Gross negligence, lata copla, or as Roman lawyers most accurately call it, Dolo proxima is in practice considered as the equivalent to dolus or fraud itself and consists, according to the best interpreters, in the omission of that care which even an attentive and thoughtless man, inattentive and thoughtless man, never failed to take upon their own property. Jones on bailments 20 it must not be confounded however with fraud for it may exist consistently with good faith and honesty of intentions according to common law authorities penalties for fraud and gross negligence us 19 usc 1592 so that being said again like I said, it's all contracts. It's all about the contracts. And if you don't get that, here's a nice little one right here. All codes, rules, and regulations are for government authorities only and not human and creator in accordance with God's law. God's law. All codes, rules, and regulations are unconstitutional and lack due process. Rodriguez v. Ray. This is decided back in 89 or 85 rather so you know one of the things that I want to cover here too is that right here in Uera v. US a citizen is a member of a political society and implies a duty of allegiance on the part of a member, and a duty of protection on the part of the society. A this for that. Hmm. But here we have, and this is just a small fraction of these cases right here, that say that the police do not have a duty to protect. There is no duty to protect. So if there's no duty to protect, then there's no this for that, which means there's no duty of allegiance. And if there is no duty of allegiance, this is the definition of what is a citizen. If there's no duty to protect, this entire thing is dissolved. There is no citizen. By their own words, by their own admissions and confessions, through their own court cases, have said a citizen technically cannot exist. 
But here is a little caveat to that. Because there is no long-term contracts, it's only contracts in the moment. Which means that at the moment, if you claim to be a citizen and nobody claims or forces you to define even what a citizen is, they're going to let you be a citizen. And by their own words, again, because I believe... Um, Oh, what is it? There was one. Uh, yeah, here. Where is this one? Let me see if I can find it real quick. There was one that I believe it was signed by. Um, where is it? Um, as a. Oh, Bill Clinton, I believe it was, signed a an executive order. I think I've already too far down. Let me go back up here. I'll find it. So this is be patient here. Oh, right here, number 33, Human Capital Executive Order uh, 13073. Look this up. I can put this, again, I can put this link if this one is still good. But look this up. Human Capital, I believe this was signed and 97 so i think that this was when clinton bill clinton was in office but i forget exactly who maybe it was one of the bushes i forget right at the moment but anyway yeah human capital so there it is folks you want to be capital you want to be a citizen you can be their property the problem with that is when you're their property, if you think you're a citizen, you're their property. Nobody complains other than maybe a few animal rights folks. If somebody takes their cattle to slaughter, nobody takes uh, issue with somebody slaughtering the chickens for market nor the pigs. Well, the reality is because it's that man's property. Well, if you want to be somebody's property and they put a bullet in your head to thin the herd some because you've been belligerent, it's not murder. <laughs> Think about it. If you want to be their fucking property, it's not murder if they fucking kill you. Whatever they are doing to you, you are consenting to. If you want to be their property, you get what you fucking get. Be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. Anyway, that's it for this round. We'll uh, be back for round three on money real short.